In this video, I'll show you how sailboat line clutches work and how they eventually fail. I'll remove and dismantle a Spinlock XTS clutch, and I'll show you how to replace the cam and base plate with a ceramic upgrade. Greetings. For this first clip, I'll do a voiceover because of unacceptable wind noise. These are the clutches, and this is the winch. The winch helps with the heavy lifting, and the clutches hold the lines tight. A normal clutch allows one-way movement when closed, like this. But look at this clutch. The lines slide either way. This problem began when I replaced an old line with a new slippery warp speed 2 line. Over years these devices get a smoothing surface wear of the cam and base plate and the spring in the cam weakens to the point it can't reliably grip the line. So what do you do? You could leave the line on the winch, but we need this winch for our spinnaker line so that's not a great option. You could tie a slip knot in the line, but that's not wise because in an emergency many binding knots are hard to undo. As a temporary measure, right now we're pressing down right here after the line is loaded, and that creates enough leverage to lock the line in place. Clearly the spring that normally does this task is not as strong as it once was. The good news is that many compatible parts are still available from our friends at Spinlock over two decades later. So the clutch we're going to work on today is the main halyard. These are double clutches, and these are bolted from underneath, so we need to get into the headliner underneath and get it unbolted to be able to lift this entirely off. I've had this uh, clutch off already previously where I replaced the base plate with a ceramic base plate and it did improve things, but not to the extent that I'm happy and so we're going to replace the um, cam uh, today. So jobs like this can be annoying because there's some fiddly things that we need to do. Now the um, clutches that we're after are right up in here and so we're going to have to remove this switch at least to let it dangle. We're going to have to remove these um, mounting screws and um, after that we should be able to pull the headliner down enough to be able to get out those bolts. These things are just cosmetic covers, they just pop off with a screwdriver. Now ideally you shouldn't hang these from things from the wires, but I don't have anything to hang it from. So now let's get these liners off. Okay, let me show you what I've got here. I've got the headliner over there with the light underneath. And then up here, we've got all of our mounting bolts for the two double winches right there. The, the one we're after is this one right here, these four. You can see I've got a little bit of a different sealant than the factory sealant, which is the white stuff here. And then this is the, these are the mounting bolts for the winch. We're not going to do anything with those. So my next strategy is to get these four bolts off. These are 13 millimeter. So I've taken the lines out, and now the next step is to get this off. All that's holding it on is the sealer. So here's the double clutch here, and you can see those four bolts. This is a ceramic base that I put in last month, and this is a regular standard base. And uh, you can see that it's held together with these four bolts. We're going to undo those now. But while I've got you here, let me show you something else. You can see those big giant Phillips heads, uh, bolt heads right there. You're going to have to thread them in when you put, mount this again. And if you look in closely, I'm not sure if you can see it. You see that? There's two more Phillips head bolts there. So now I'm taking all these screws out to get the old uh, sealer off. I'll put it on a wire wheel and clean this up so I can get the new sealer in. In my opinion, this is a vulnerable point of the system because uh, rainwater gets in here all the time. Um, so you got to do both uh, bolt heads and you've got to seal around the neck of it so that you don't get water wicking down the the neck of the bolt. Now look at the underside of this. You can see that there's my sealer there and I've left gaps so that rainwater that does get in the top has a way to get out through the sides. You don't want to seal it up completely because you'll form a little lake and then water will find the easiest pathway down these bolt holes. So you want to allow good drainage uh, from the top uh, down and then out the sides. Okay, at this point, you want to make note of this little washer right here, this little black washer. And this thing goes right there on the inside between the two. There's one on each side. Now on the opposite side, this is the thing that just came off and it's built right into the lateral sidewall. So you only need that little washer on the inside. Now bear note of the Fairleads. Here's one here that came off with the um, outer wall and this is the one that came off. It uh, stayed with the uh, housing itself. Now I'm going to take this 
piece out. Then I'm going to squeeze it in and turn this over. Now I'm breaking free the um, corrosion and the previous sealer and my goal is to get this whole thing lifted out. Now while we're at it here, let's have a look at our new part. This is the um, ceramic version of the cam which is right here and it seems to fit perfectly. So I just need to take this cam out and put this one new, new cam in. And so let's see what we can do here. I've been trying to pull this pin out. I would have preferred soft jawed pliers but I don't have any on the boat today. It's coming out nicely. There we are. This is the base light that I that I replaced last month. Here's the old, and then with the new. Now let's put this back together. And here's a shot of the sealer I'm using. I'm going to put the sealer on the neck of these bolts now, if only because it's easier to get at them now compared to later. Gotta make sure I remember which one is which, otherwise we'll have to relabel the handles. Remember this little thing on the inside for each of them. Okay, I just slid it down over this piece here seems to be perfect. Now let's put the handle on. Don't forget that little washer right here. Ah! This thing popped out. Looks right. Now the other wall. Now it's worthwhile noting that these nuts can go on either side. They're captive nuts, but if you look at the design, it could be either way. And so think about your design as to whether or not you want the Phillips heads to be on which side. It may make it easier, although in the end, normally when these require service, they need to be completely unbolted from underneath. And then good practice is to do, use a crisscross pattern when you're finally tightening them up. You don't have to go crazy here. And then a last minute check to make sure it works properly. Oh yeah. The manufacturer says not to use WD-40 on this. You can use silicone spray, but not WD-40. They're concerned about the plastic. So here's a shot of the old cam. Don't know if you can appreciate any wear there. It really feels fine to me. It's a little bit smooth. Let's see how the ceramic cam works by comparison. Okay, I've got the bolts scooped up with sealant. Let's put it into place. 
Okay, I'm going to shut it down from there. At that point, I wiped off excessive cedar. I let it sit for 24 hours and I refed the lines. And indeed, the clutches work way better now, so I'm really happy with the results. So if you got this far, I really appreciate you coming along. I'd uh, be interested in any thoughts you might have. Thanks for watching.